Hello, hello. My name is Cynthia Miller, and I'm an artist volunteer and on the POG Board of Directors. Um, thank you for coming tonight to this reading, this recorded reading of our friends and contemporary poets, Maymay Bersenbrug and Charles Bernstein. You are in for a treat. So welcome. POG activities take place in part because of the following organizations and institutions. So our, our thanks go out to Arizona Cares, Arizona Commission on the Arts, the Arts Federation of Tucson and Southern Arizona, Poets and Writers, Inc., the Warehouse Arts Management Organization, the University of Arizona Poetry Center, Chax Press, the University of Arizona English Department, Arizona Quarterly, and you, friends and donors. Our patrons include Mary Ellen Bartholomew, Cynthia Hogue, Josen Lagapa, Joan Larkin, Judith Lefebvre, Cameron Kwan Louie, Lisa Martin, Charles Alexander, Tenny Nathanson, Steve Salmoni, Richard Tavner, David Weiss, and Tom and Trudy Weiss. Um, our sponsors include Karen Brennan, Cutthroat, a journal of arts um, hosted by Pam Busha, Reed Dixon, Lynn Finger, Shell McDonald, Barbara Miller, Jameson, Jenna Osman, Anthony Sovak, and Susan Thackeray. If you have extra money lying around and love what we do, you too can become a donor, sponsor, or patron. Please visit our website at pogartstucson.org. Uh, upcoming readings will include Sunday, October 18th, uh, Tucson Black Voices, a poetry tribute, um, a Zoom live Zoom reading hosted by um, board member Lisa Perielli Martin. Okay. And then in uh, November 14th, we'll have poets Janice Lee and our own Will Stanier. So please enjoy yourselves. Tonight we have the pleasure of premiering a video featuring the poets Maymay Bersenbrugge and Charles Bernstein. Both of these poets are no strangers to Pog or Chax Press or Tucson or all of our communities. In fact, our relationships go back to the early 1980s before Pog began and have continued to the present. Relationships built of readings, conversations, books, and what I think of as community building, which is really at the heart of what Pog does and what we poets in our various connected tissues help to put together with everything we do. These two poets are at the centers of Pog's concern to help keep innovative poetry and poetics alive through our presentations to public audiences and now to online public audiences. Both Bersenbrugge and Bernstein are veterans of a wave, a lifetime invested in creating kinds of poetry that test the limits of what our literature might include. And in doing so, they inspire what Pog has always sought to accomplish. Bersenbrugge, in her many books, Hiddenness, Empathy, Mizu, Hello, the Roses, Endochronology, and many more, including the recent A Treatise on Stars, which is a finalist for the National Book Award at present, has sought to create a space for the mind, the breath, the perceptions, to intertwine in long lines which draw in and include the reader in a variety of observations and meditations based on the world in which we live and think and the impacts of such life and thought. Long ago, Maymay said that she had made two important commitments for and through her work, to the sentence and to beauty. She has also, in the course of this work, entirely interrogated those two notions, how they might work, what they might mean, how we might find beauty and what we may have to say about it. We are fortunate witnesses to her imagination, which I find nothing less than visionary. In the company of such writers as William Blake and Hildegard of Bingen and Hannah Wiener, she expands us. Charles Bernstein functions as something like a dean of our innovative or avant-garde poetics. Yeah, what a funny, inquisitive, and sometimes unsettling dean. Perhaps wearing the hat of a trickster or a vaudeville top hat. 
though I admit the only hat I've actually ever seen him wear was a quite stylish fedora. Charles can hypnotize us with what seems like a comic routine that then turns to a socio-poetic point we cannot fail to hear, and by which we cannot fail to be moved. He seems sometimes emotionally distanced from us, then might read an elegy in which the heart is before us, entirely open and unprotected. Charles has taught at the State University of New York at Buffalo and the University of Pennsylvania. At both, he held endowed chair positions. And while he was there, contributing strongly to those places becoming among the most key sites for the most exploratory American poetics of our time. In books like The Sophist, Content Stream, The Pitch of Poetry, Fool's Gold, Girly Man, and many more, he has contributed poems, essays, and artistic collaborations, often with his partner, the painter Susan B., which have not let us rest from our constant redefinitions, not only of what poetry might be, but of who we might be. In 2019, he received the Bollingen Prize, the highest poetry prize in America. But like Bersenbrugge, who was a lifetime friend of Bernstein, it's never been about prizes or nations. In fact, both are internationally renowned, but more importantly, both simply work constantly on behalf of our collective minds, practices, and societies. On behalf of the POG Board of Directors and POG, the organization, it is my sheer joy to introduce their videos tonight. Hey, May May, it's great to see you. Where are you? I'm, uh, I'm in uh, Maine, Bar Harbor, Maine. Bar uh, Harbor, Maine. I am in Brooklyn, New York. Well, it's great to uh, be here for uh, POG reading in Tucson. And sorry uh, that we, went, we planned to be together today, and, uh, today in person, but uh, not to be. So I'm going to jump off and, uh, and let you uh, read, and I'm looking forward to hearing it. Thank you. Thank you. Charles is doing me the courtesy of being my audience today and a live audience. And I, I thank you, Charles. Uh, we were going to read together in Tucson and uh, then have a driving trip up to New Mexico, uh, where I live. And now we're doing it this way. I'm going to read from uh, my new book, um, A Treatise on Stars. I'll read three poems. Uh, in this book, I, um, my initial idea was to make one ecosystem or out of the heavens and earth. And uh, that expanded into other kinds of unity. So the first poem is called Jaguar. It's in four sections. And um, when I mention Abicure, it takes place, many of the places are in New Mexico, my longtime home. People around Abicure claim descent from the Pleiadians and their beloved animals. We've always known relatives from other places, Andromedans, Orionites, Zeta, Reticulans, Syrians. Cosmic relations are expressed by our plaza. Also in new homes, we align with winter and summer light. All around, are invisible realities where contact may occur. Some hear coyotes speaking in computer beeps. Some entertain guests unaware. Owls, for example, have one song beyond the range of our hearing, interleaved with multidimensional information. The 4D projection of this song generates a star. 
I invite you to stand close tonight, looking up while our heart frequencies entrain and we experience heart cognition, a kind of analytic thought oriented around images with feeling, associating memories attract light. Your memory becomes an informational flow accessed through pathways or stories others share with others that seem simple in daylight, though you may be traveling backward in time or forward by resonance into space. That may be the only way to communicate with some others. Where are you going? Where are you coming from? I'm going to the stone circle at the end of my land. I'm going to collect seeds from primroses on the road to look at some land to buy, to visit my friend, visit my mother. Crossing and recrossing arroyos and mesas create a dense web between beings and home. In the same way, the neural grid of an ecosystem continually adjusts to maintain as light between the hearts of mother and daughter or light back and forth from stars maintains homeodynamics in space. Our desire for light, for consciousness is pulled from the transcendent domain of potentia by the needs of environment herself. When you were a baby, my friend painted the star beings who visited her as angels, kachinas, very beautiful snakes. She taught us to hold our connection with each other in a new geography that weaves stars with the ground. Milky Way courses overhead. Dark patches show against its foam like divinations. Earth is a node of intersections in our galaxy and beyond, receiving millions of tons of extraterrestrial material a year as cosmic dust, meteorites, asteroids breaking up to scatter their bacteria and splash ours back out. All life forms are in potential genetic exchange. Viruses transpose DNA between mosquitoes and humans, for example, or between plants and microorganisms from space. We symbiotically merge into more complex new species in order to stabilize Earth's self-organizing whole. I describe consciousness as Mother Earth and the intelligence that shapes it. It's like an image of the moon on two different television sets. The real moon exists in different space than our living room. When we go outside at night, I'm nervous. I'm afraid for the animals. I mix consciousness with time, confuse time with what could happen. I struggle for understanding beyond environmental fears and grief. Consciousness is like the live feed of a jaguar on two different video screens. The real jaguars filmed in a rainforest, preparing her energies. Before I knew what to look for at night, I no longer know. My fear offers new possibility, the way awareness can create. Two birds perch in a constellation tree 
with the same name. One eats star fruit, the other looks on. They're together, which we recognize like the sun and moon. One shines out, one waits for light. Observing and observed universe are complementary aspects of their love. Okay, I'm gonna get some water. This poem is Luke's. Um, it's um, in a way about how extraterrestrials live every day with us, interweave with light and dark. It also has four sections. She does not distinguish spirit from body, which interweave via the senses. It begins with wonder, then interest. The light of mind and sunlight entwine in your eye, though separately each is unseen, like starlight without an object to fall on. Deep space is black. Inner life coalesces with daylight, a spectrum on which fluctuations of light from the object stimulate sight, while you simultaneously enhance your reception until finally you see the ideal within the real. Your consciousness lovingly assimilates new events to enhance cognition that ensouls space. I present physical evidence where applicable, but my interest is in my informant and her words. I learn more about that eureka moment when intense phenomenon becomes transparent to the ideal. Material and imaginary flow into each other through a crack of light, observation between worlds. Juxtaposition becomes a blend of unconscious and external event. The more distant the relation, the more emotional, poetic, the perception for my witness, bright physical light weakens the interpretive. But there are two emanations, one from the eye close to mind and one from a star which conjoin. A close encounter inscribes such diffuse liminal boundaries of the imaginary. Psyche becomes increasingly collective as it assimilates with the gorgeous world. It's as if a star offered you the nourishing, ineffable light of a new realism between subject and object that beings from outer space manifest to you physically is unproven in my field, but still true. Each account is recorded as fact in my notebook. Then I can travel up through light and become more intimate with its star. I wake and see out the window a ball of light swirling above the trees. A woman stands under the trees where certain plants grow. She knots the leaves into a symbol using streamers of light. And as I watch, I know I'll remember. 
My window is the same as light going through it. Luminous is a better word than translucent. When I try to describe her, I draw a star. I saw stars like children's stickers on the window glass. I know if I draw one, I can go there. Darkness is light's resting state in deep space. Transparence can occur all at once the way your face lights with understanding or a wave passes you to Andromeda with the swiftness of near and far at the same time. Consciousness may be such a light source with metaphoric power. Thread is a feeling of spiritual connection. Sunlight is love. Language and energy interchange. We can experience a physical event by association, algorithm. A star visitor could be the attribute of such association. Seeing starlight is seeing the visible in the invisible. That fragile imaginal cloth holding planet and existence together. When I ask if they're literally extraterrestrials or a metaphor from inner realms, she says, there is no difference in significance. Their skies are full of life. She describes starlight as scalar without properties of distance or time. Any spirit and matter she calls star walking, remote viewing, meditation, intuition, plants she was shown, and any soul possessing a certain shine she calls starlight. The power of relation came through their extraordinary yellow eyes, she tells me. You're looking into a star, convex, immense, flashing colors through opalescent, flowing nuclear fusion. I feel separated from home now. I look up at night sky with great longing. They showed me earth through their eyes. Their oneness extends to us, whereas I'm in the dark. Then it opens onto luminescence. There's a lot of snow. There's a lot of stars, huge, no horizon and very bright. I see the Pleiades. I feel like a wolf looking toward home. Phew, a shooting star just dropped there onto the snow. So I go over to it. A crystal has dropped on the snow and there's light, a face in the stone. It's as if I'm looking up through the sky and things are very clear and I'm coming up through the ice. I've been below all this time and now I see stars. Wonder is in five parts. Part of the setting is also the Mesa where I live in New Mexico. One summer night walking from our house after dinner, Stars make the sky almost white. My awe is like blindness. Wonder exchanges for sight. Star by star comprises a multiplicity like thought, but quiet, too dense for any dark planet between. 
while single stars are a feature of the horizon at dusk, caught at the edge of the net of gems. Transparence hanging on its outer connectedness casts occurrence as accretion filling in of extravagant euphoric blooming. Then being as spirit and in matter is known here to there. I go home and tell my children to come out and look. The souls of my two children fly up like little birds into branches of the Milky Way, chatting with each other, naming constellations, comparing crystals and fire. They exclaim at similarities between what they see in the sky and on our land. So by wonder, they strengthen correspondence between sky and home. Earth is made from this alchemy of all children, human and animal, combined with our deep gratitude. I see his dark shape moving and shifting against night's screen of stars. My little girl reaches for his lighted silhouette Human beings are thought upward and flown through by bright birds. We believe stars are spirits of very high frequency. We feel proud our animals come from stars so dense in meaning close to sacrament. We describe passing time in stories about animals. Star movement is named for seasonal migrations of deer, wolf, hummingbird, dolphin, and as animals, stars still walk among us. Our snake Olivia, for example, tells me there is no conflict between humans and rain because resource is all around us. A coyote loved night and he loved to gaze at the stars. I noticed one star in Cassiopeia. I talked to her and each night she grew brighter and closer until she came to life here as a corn snake, my friend. She looks like a dancer on tiptoe, stepping around pink star blossoms, surging up after rain. Constellations are experienced emotionally as this play of self through plant and animal symbols and values. A dream atmosphere flows. Everything represented is sacred. Being moves in accord, not of time. Returning from the Milky Way, she realized crystals had fallen from her bag and looked up. My story links a journey to sky with the creation of stars in which place accommodates becoming. Chama River flows north-south to the horizon, then straight up through the Milky Way, like water moving beneath a riverbed that's dry. Abiquiu Mountain, El Rito Creek, Coyote, Snake, Rainbow and Rain, spider and hummingbird identify equivalent spiritual placements above. So wherever we go, there is company, nurture from every star in our regard. I start up to ask my birds to return home and find our land continuous with a starry sky mapped as entities who set into motion occurrence here. Place awaits an imprint from this potential, even though starlight arriving now already happened. What happens is a depth of field before and after drought, fire, storm disruption, 
I move at high speed, but I'm still standing beside my house in the dark. To go there, I play the one. Sorry. To go there, I find the place on our mesa that cor correlates to their tree in the sky and leap up. Space stirs as star trilliums emerge through darkness like humus. I ask one blossom to please in the future renew these bonds between sky and my children so they will always hold light in the minerals of their eyes. Sun on its nightly underground journey weaves a black thread between white days on the cosmic loom, like a chord or resonance between new experience and meaning. The origin of stars expresses the underlying warp of this fabric. Summer solstice draws a diagonal across my floor, precession weaving ground of informing spirit. So therefore, life is fundamental to stars. The reverse is well known. That's why I don't use a telescope, star charts, or glasses when I go out. I think of a place I wait, then fly to my children. When the stargate is raised, there is a narrow door between sky and ground. But when I arrive, I find the sky solid. I can't break through to visit my star birds and stand there wondering before dawn. Then sky vault lifts. Maybe I can slip through to find the Milky Way and see its blossoms. Then our sun appears in the crack and pushes through to the day. It's so bright, so hot, I step back and cover my eyes. I hear my mother calling. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Amy and I plan to be in Tucson to read today, right now, depending on what now is for you. But we've come up with this program to stand in our place. Uh, thanks so much to Pog for inviting us. Eyes Song, after Rukert and Mahler. Comes I to this world abandoned, having wasted the time I was handed, till all that's left is the bandage. No matter unnoticed, time passes slowly as dreams become lashes, still alone and caught in rhymes ashes dead to this world's wrong dwells still i in my song in every thorn at every morn we may be all in this together depending on what that means. Whatever the common menace, our outcomes will never be the same. Deep below our difference is not interconnection, but incommensurability. Human is not so much shared as contested. Empathy and solidarity are crucial investments, but acknowledging our uncommonness alongside our commonness, grounds struggles to resist the hegemony of the universe. On Election Day. I hear democracy weep 
on election day. The streets are filled with brokered promise on election day. The miscreant votes the same as saints on election day. The dead unleash their fury on election day. My brother crushed in sorrow on election day. The sister does her washing on election day. Slowly I approach the voices dark on election day. The men prepare for dying on election day. The morning hush defends its brood on election day. So still, so kindly faltering on election day. On election day, the cat takes tea with the marmoset. On election day, the mother refuses her milk. On election day, the frogs croak so fiercely, you would think that Mars had fallen into Earth. On election day, the Iron Man meets her frozen grasp. The air is putrid, red, interpolating, quixotic, corporate, vulnerable on election day. Your eyes slide on election day. Still the mourners mourn. The weepers wept. The children sleep alone in bed on election day. No doubt a comet came to see me, fiery and irreconciled, torrid, strummed on election day. On election day, the trespass of the fatuous alarm and ignominious aspiration fells the golden leap to girdled crest. The tyrant becomes prince on election day. Neither friend nor foe, fear nor fate. On election day, the liar lies with the lamb on election day. The last shall be the first, and first sent to the back of the line. On election day, the beggar made a king. On election day, let him who is without my palms be assassinated. On election day, let he who has not sinned let him sin on election day. The ghosts wear suits on election day. On election day, sulfur smells like beer. On election day, the minister quakes in fear. On election day, the pole and the shoe dance the foxtrot. On election day, the shoe does not fit the foot. The bullet misfires in its pistol. The hungry waiter reels before steadying himself on facts. The grid does not gird the fiddler on election day. Galoshes and tears on election day. The sperm cannot find the egg on election day. The drum beats become bird song on election day. I feel like a nightmare's ending, but can't wake up on election day. Zoom is where poetry goes to die, or where we die and go for poetry. Or is it the best available platform for poetry in the age of COVIDity? Zoom live streaming hiccups. Maybe it's time instead of given. Only we could dwell in those gaps.
Poetry's medium is sound and rhythm, bodily gesture, visual inscription. Digital resource poetry have been fundamental for poetry over the past 25 years. The audio of a reading can be sublime in a way the video of the same reading often isn't. Well, couldn't be. I want poems that are ecstatic in the sense that they are exceeding of moral and political discourse. Poems as sensation, as performance, as aesthetic. Doing rather than stating. Difficult poems that put readers in the middle of difficult circumstances that cannot be resolved through conventional position taking. More than exaggeration, extravagance, and insistence that rhetorical subsumes expressive for Amiri Baraka. Hatred of poetry or any way of its unruly aesthetic dimension will always be more convincing than radicalized in poetry, especially if the hatred is pitched as care or cure. My name is Charles Bernstein. I'm in Brooklyn, New York, and I wrote this short poem a few weeks ago and sending it to all of you and Marion, thinking of you and thinking of all of us. The poem is called Shelter in Place. It's no go from the get go, strumming a mordant medley from the old days when we danced with abandon. Now we are abandoned. God's silence deafens us to each other and the fiddlers diddle a familiar tune, familiar and deadly. Wake up, say those still, still small voices. The anthro obscene is playing just north of here. And this is just a taste of what's to come. Won't you give up this poem to someone who needs it? Remember when I told you about purgatory, limbo, how all that's happening now is just this waiting around till the big cheese makes up her mind about you? She makes you the way you are and then decides if it panned out. For every 10 half-baked cookies, there's a gem. And you know, maybe you're one of those. Then there's that take her name in vain. What do you call them? The religious moralists? She don't much cotton to them. Not when they try to take away a woman's right to choose. Or bad mouth folks almost as queer as she is. Well, everyone makes mistakes. That's what purgatory is for. Sometimes it happens that while you wait, you see what's what. Start accepting that you're in a long queue for God only knows what. And neither of you has any idea what the hell the matter is. Or what to do about it. Harry Crosby's photo heliograph black 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 sun black 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 sun black 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 Black, 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 black,
black, black, black, black, black, black, black, black, sun, black, 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 sun, black, 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 there is no shade in the forest when we beat our wings against the moss and tear the petals off the spruce, revealing what's never said but spoken, companion to discordant facts stack three foot high above the drawers, clogging corridors. Consonance is this world's only comfort stony stare of stars on bleary night, awake enough to lose a dozen threads, invent a baker's dozen more for recompense. The gravel does not hold, the road beyond repair, yet closer to my far than dusk's approaching glare. Be always drunk, that's all. That's the only question. So not to feel the horrific heaviness of time weighing on your shoulders, crushing you to ground. You must be drunk ceaselessly. But on what? On wine, on poetry, or on virtue in your fashion, but drunken be. And if some time on palace steps, on the green grass by an abyss, in mournful solitude in your room, if some time you awake, drunkenness dimmed or done, ask of the wind, of the wave, of the star, of the bird, of the clock, of all that flees, of all that wails, of all that roils of all that sings, of all that speaks, ask what hour it is. And the wind, the wave, the bird, and the clock will answer. It is the hour to get drunk, so not to be the slavish martyr of time. Be drunken, be drunken without stopping on wine, on poetry, or on virtue, in your fashion. Clinging to life filled with dread, fed upon by swarms of the undead, who eat my flesh, gnaw my bones, as if for them, it's holy bread. Every true religion is bound to fail. Only the divine truth reveals itself in lies. Smarter truths disguise themselves as fundament or wise. On the way from dusk to dark, slip to slap, pitch to black, a haze cries sudden slow searing sworn, betraying delays, sullied song. Every true monument lays in shards, layered with tongues. The trip to caution foments alarm, as lulled to passion, action never reverses wrong. No certainty ever could cancel right. Tried syrup for a while, round of sweetness for ton of tears, 
fault of fellows, rusty melons that mock the girls and make us dry, mock the curls and make men sigh. Like it is. Over the tops, not over the hill. If the boogeyman don't get you, undertaker will. It's a day to tomorrow, feels like yesterday. Everything keeps speeding up, but today it's way slow down. The ins are on the outs, take it from me. Lima beans with butter. See what I mean? One guy plays a horn, girl gives a couple of shouts inside the morning papers. Reality keeps on lashing out. Feel free to play victim. Feel free to play cop. Never Twain's meeting until it's pitch as dark. It's a day to tomorrow. Feels like yesterday. Everything keeps speeding up. But today, it's so slow down. Zeno's way. Three steps ahead, knock to floor. Get up, pushed two steps behind. Knock down again. Get up, two steps ahead. Time out. Push back one step. Push ahead three steps. Pushed back one step, pushed sideways, five steps, knocked out, wake up groggy, five steps to back in place, continue on as before, as after. At Pessoa's grave. I'm not me, nor you, you, neither we, we, but all's found in them's they. As if by moonlight. It is what it is. It's not what it's not. It hurts where it hurts. It cut where it cuts. It counts when it could. It strays where it stayed. It stayed when it strays. It shudders as I shut. It dropped as it drops. It drips as it dripped. It was what it is. Ours impotent. Poetry is made not of ideas, but of words. Poetry is made not of ideas, but words. Poetry is made not of ideas, but of words. Of words, poetry is made of, not ideas. Words is what poetry is made of, not ideas. Not of ideas, poetries. Made of words. Is made of words, poetry, not ideas. Made not of ideas, but words, poetry. After Reznikov, how difficult Yiddish for me, even father, the Yiddish word for Hebrew, tongues foreign, like home never had or once do. Because they see my scraggly beard, my crooked hat, and the dark shine from my glasses. 
They say, I am a poet after Leon de Grief. Affect theory. Sorry to be so sorry. Sad to be so sad. Distraught at my distress. Melancholic on account of my melancholy. Depressed to be depressed. Anxious about my anxiety. Happy to be happy. Glad to be glad. Disappointed by disappointment. Amused to be amused. Angry about anger. Indifferent to indifference. Despairing about despair. Lost in my loss. Buzzed to be buzzed. Dumbfounded to be dumbfounded. Hurt by the hurt. Wounded by the wound. Humiliated by humiliation. Paranoid about paranoia. Miffed to be miffed. Abject in objectification. Unlucky to be unlucky. Desiring desire. Blankly blank. Ashamed to be ashamed. Ignorant of my ignorance. Guilty feeling guilty. Paralyzed by my Paralysis, embarrassed by my embarrassment, silenced by my silence, enabled by my immobility, agitated by my agitation, okay being okay, mystified to be confused, inconsolable about being inconsolable, frightened by my fearfulness. Encouraged by my timidity. Johnny Cake Hollow. So quillen swacked, unmiri flooped, sardoon to flagrant swarm, or Jimmy Plate or Garvey swape, it given durs irk clerp, sheb booty blur, de daisy duel, dumb foopy giggles glide. Jub Crylopane, Jed Jimsy's cack, inst erdobo thump glyre, eb hule bloot, ig ore sleep, neb nist, neb op, neb guan. Schleb atsum imba outsi burft, alapi murp av ords, ein ainsley swish, ein ainsley sploop, a gall's deb dolster flug. Ig ars unimbit, truel be grub, ig ubers quert ag blurg. Be in my bonnet, stings all night long. Be in bonnet all night long. No sooner morning comes, begin to holler and bawl. One time I'm in the hen coop. Next, at a loading dock, afraid I'll tumble down the stairs, then that I may not be in bonnet, stings night and day, dozen flights of angels, not one who knows the way. I'm game if you are, see you on other side. God said he's hiding, hope to meet her before I die, be in bonnet. Stings me all night long. Dozen flights of angels. Not one to take me home. The tree trunk is like the tree trunk. The table is like the table. The beams are like the beams. The sky is like the sky. The clouds are like the clouds. The pillows are like the pillows. The 
melody. It's like the melody, the breath is like the breath. The face is like the face. The eyes song after Rukert and Mahler. Comes I to this world abandoned, having wasted the time I was handed, till all that's left is the bandage. No matter unnoticed, time passes slowly as dreams become lashes, still alone and caught in rhymes, ashes. Dead to this world's wrong dwells still I in my song, in every thorn, at every morn.